One of the hottest things to jump on the OJ bandwagon. Yes, can you believe this? OJ comic books. A lot of publishers are betting that these comic books will actually become classics, illustrated classics. But as Greg Agnew reports, maybe the jury is still out. Superman, Batman, the Men in Black, OJ. The Simpsons saga is everywhere, but would you expect to read about it in a comic book? That's right, comic books are the latest Simpson item to hit the stands. City Band's been good. Uh, it brought many people in that wouldn't normally have come into the store in the first place. Uh, our slant is, is satirical. I mean, we, we, we talk about the, the biography of the two principal characters, and we do give you the actual facts of where they were born and how they got to where they are, etc. But we also add a lot of humor and a lot of satire in uh, you know, how we perceive these people. One hot seller is the he said, she said line. It follows the notion there are always two sides to every story. Well, we give a lot of leeway to our artists um, when they're drawing the, the covers. So I guess the artist, uh, I guess he sees Robert Shapiro as a cool cat who likes to pose and uh, is a real Hollywood figure. And he sees Marsha Clark more as uh, an aggressive um, prosecutor looking to essentially attack OJ. Another popular comic book comes from Boneyard Press. Well, the first OJ comic, the only thing I've heard from people has been, there's not enough OJ. They want more OJ. More O.J., more O.J. I would like to see uh, F. Lee Bailey in sackcloth, sackcloth with ashes. That would be a scream. The latest issue of He Said, She Said features a rather interesting centerfold. With He Said, She Said number five, we didn't put a, uh, a woman in the centerfold. We put O.J. Simpson's mugshot, and our readers didn't like it much, and we started getting letters demanding that the next comic go back to the format of having a woman in the centerfold, so we went back to the Marshall Clark. O.J. comics attract a variety of readers, but they're not for everyone. They just kind of turned my stomach when I saw the cover. <laughs> we, get, uh, we do get people calling up thinking that it's in bad taste, and then, of course, we just explain to them it's just our, our interpretation of it, and if they don't like to, uh, to read that, that they shouldn't. I'm kind of curious if O.J. has a sense of humor. I mean, he's been in the Naked Gun films. I don't know if that was just a career move, if he actually enjoyed doing that. I guess the best reaction was from Robert Shapiro. Um, we, we all kind of had a pool on how long it would take for him to call up and order some. And uh, sure enough, it took about 10 days. So I guess he's currently wallpapering his office with, the, uh, with his cover. I doubt that they've seen them. My comics tend to get snapped right up. Their circulation is pretty, pretty small. I mean, it's throughout the country and it's throughout... Uh, well, it doesn't really get into Canada. Canada doesn't like my, what I do very much. But it's, it is distributed throughout the country. It's a national thing. So I don't think they've seen it. But I've been thinking about jaunting down to the courthouse and dropping off some free copies. <laughs> Joining us now, the publisher, writer of Doing Time with O.J. and O.J.'s big bust out, Hart Fisher. Hart, tell me something. Are they mean-spirited comic books? My sense of humor tends to be mean-spirited. It's very much a blend of Mel Brooks and Monty Python on crack. <laughs> but it, it, you go into the grotesque a little bit with victim scenes, don't you? Mm, not really, no. No, not stabbing? I mean, this is just kind of the, the parody of the parody? No, I left, I left the victims completely out of it because I didn't find much humor in that. And I stuck mainly with O.J. in the media circus and, and spoofing prison life. Where did that come from in your little brain, which may not be so little, but... Well, the gimmick basically is, is me and a bunch of buddies will sit down and be joking, and they'll kind of be like, well, how about this, or how about that? And I'm the guy who's laughing in the background, writing it all down on a notepad. You know, we actually get a lot of faxes from people who love to do fax art and kind of draw things. I mean, we, you know, can you give them any advice or any tips about when they're drawing? Or do well, you get stuff really from... You get it from your idea of what's going on, or do you really get anything from the trial itself? The trial, not really. I, I've been, I mainly read Newsweek or Time, and I, I stay away from the Inquirer and the Star. So I, uh, that's what I use. <laughs> did you pick up Time or Newsweek today? Did you get it? How do you, what do you mean by that? I don't understand. I, I read Newsweek and Time. I try to stay away from TV because TV sens sensationalizes it a lot, uh, much like this coverage, you know. It, you know, sensationalize it. You mean you don't? Sure With comic I books? Sure I do. So you just want to sensationalize based on fact? Well, I, that's what I'm interested in. I read that, and then I just kind of, it gives me ideas, and I just kind of go. I don't know where the ideas come from. I just know what I feed my mind, and then it just, it just comes. Um, you've done some things that I guess are, are somewhat grotesque in the fact that um, 
I mean, you've done a parody, a Jeffrey Dahmer parody, and, and mm -hmm. the victim's families got very angry at you and actually Well, it wasn't the parody. Think. It was a biography. I did a Dahmer biography about, geez, it's going on like two, three years ago. In cartoon form? Comic it was form? a comic book. Yeah, it was a comic book biography, and it was uh, meant to illustrate what a monster this person was. And some reporters in Milwaukee bought the comic and started showing it to the victim's families and stirring them up, and it, it became a whole ugly mess. So, uh, yeah, I've, that's the one that uh, the media likes. You know, it's interesting for. because I just, I, I just assume, you know, and I, I just realized what I do. When I think comic, I think parody. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is, I guess, in this way, you were doing, you were telling a story in a visual form that's based in a comic book. Do you think this is a kind of a, a, a genre that we're going to see comics going that is more toward uh, tabloid tales than something that uh, is a spoof? Really? Well, it's always been in there, like with Mad Magazine back with the... Uh, when EC was publishing it uh, way back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. You've always had that satire. Only I think with the underground movement, it's, it's a little more bitter. It's a little bit more adult. Uh, the content is, is not afraid of taboos. Hart Fisher, thanks so much for joining us. No problem. And coming up next, Mike Walker, what's in the National Enquirer today?